Before you watch this video, there are two other videos that you should watch in case you haven't seen them or just in case you need to refresh your memories. And that's my Locomotive Traction Explained video and my SD70 ACE versus the ES44 AC video. I'll leave a link to both in the description box. Norfolk Southern 8764 is a C40-9 top hat, the class unit of the Dash 9s on Norfolk Southern and has since been rebuilt into an AC44C6N. Locomotive number 4275 is an AC44C6M that was rebuilt from the Dash 944CW number 9096 just two months earlier that same year in January of 2020. This explains why its shiny, newly minted black varnish stands out among the slightly weather-weary appearance of its brothers number 4196 and 4182 along with the very weather-weary DC Jeevo. One reason that I think that GE locomotives were rarely ever rebuilt in the past was that new engines were rumored to be required to replace the existing engines which suffer from cracks in the cast crankcases after 15 to 20 years of service. By comparison, EMD units rarely required new crankcases, replacement of the power assemblies often being all that was required. Personally, I was surprised that the original engine was used in the Norfolk Southern GE DC to AC rebuilds. In comparison, the Hammersley Iron Dash 9s had new engines or at least new crankcases after only 10 years, albeit 10 years of brutally hard service. It's a dramatic comparison that Hammersley needed new crankcases on their GEs while the BHT Billiton was putting 40-year-old XPSD40s into service with their original crankcases still in them. And keep in mind that I'm talking about SD40s that clearly put in work on the grades of Tehachapi, Donner Pass and Rio Grande's Rocky Mountain lines including the Soldier Summit because like I said cracking was a problem with many GE FDLs. Going a little further down memory lane, in 2010 the Norfolk Southern ordered 42 additional ES44 ACs from GE. NS was quite the power short railroad at the time and GE was able to deliver the units in an almost immediate time frame. The reason that NS was able to take near immediate delivery of these units in the fall of 2008 was due to the fact that the materials were already in the pipeline for a CSX ES44 AC order that had been cancelled. This is why, to this day, NS ES44 ACs are built largely to CSX specs. The first 24 ES44 AC units that NS received in 2008 were a true token order for NS and the performance of these GVOs finally convinced the railroad to shift to AC traction, having only dabbled with AC traction up to that point with the former Conrail SD80 Max. The model designation for the Burlington Northern Santa Fe rebuild is the AC44C4M, only tier 0 since it keeps the old 7FDL 16 cylinder prime mover and existing radiator cooling setup. For an aside, I heard a story about a Kodachrome SF30C in Fostoria, Ohio back in the early 1990s. It was being added to a CSX consist, I think and the engineer climbed into the cab, set up some controls, and then climbed down and walked up to the builder's plate to read it. One can only assume that it was the first SF30C that he'd ever seen before, and I'm not betting that he checked the builder's plates on every locomotive that he operated. The point is that in the early days of the AC44C4M production, there might have been a few crewmen that checked the details on an AC44C4M the first time that they'd encountered one. I've heard that the Santa Fe 600 series locomotives 
has mechanical fuel injection, whereas all C44-9Ws built for the Bensif have electronic fuel injection. If that's true, then their rebuilt AC44C4Ms would probably have electronic fuel injection too. Typically, the locomotive that leaves the factory and the same locomotive that gets removed from the roster at the end of its service life will be different due to revisions, redesigns, and updates of the replacement parts. Due to the new regulations of the 21st century, those particular prime movers are pretty much frozen in their tier zero state. If I recall correctly, the second oldest C44-9Ws on the Bensef's roster are the 9060 to 1123 series, which were mostly in Heritage 1 paint and still had the three pane side windows. My guess at the time was that they were the next in line to be rebuilt after the former Santa Fe 600 series. The 700 through 799 series Bensef Silver Bonnets were actually younger than the 960 to 1123 series and were the first C44-9Ws to have the four pane side windows that's become the standard on all subsequent Bensef GEs. Last I knew was that many of the 960 through 1123 series had been largely stored at various locations around the BNSF system, particularly in Barstow, California. The AC44 C6M rebuilding project included conversion to AC traction utilizing GE electrical components, a new electrical cabinet, GEVO style wide nose crew cab with additional ballasted weight increased to 432,000 pounds when fully loaded with supplies. All rebuilt units meet tier 1 plus emission standards and all six axles are powered with GE AC traction motors. Some units are equipped for electronically controlled pneumatic train braking and all units are equipped for use in distributed power unit operation. Other extras are the GE trip optimizer and positive train control system and all rebuilt units have air conditioning. Locomotives number 4000 and 4001 were rebuilt by American Motive Power Incorporated in Dansville, New York under a contract with GE. The 4000 was unveiled on December 15, 2015, painted in a special blue, gray, gold, and black scheme to highlight the rebuilding of the unit from DC to AC traction. Following the initial unveiling, the unit returned to the paint shop for changes to the original paint scheme. On December 28, 2015, both the 4000 and 4001 were unveiled with a modified version of the original special DC to AC paint scheme. The front logo was changed from gold to white with a black horse while the rear logo was changed from blue to white with a black horse. The horse head logos on each side of the engine compartment were changed from blue to black. Unit number 4002 was released on September 1, 2016 painted in a special black, gray, Tuscan red and white scheme to highlight the rebuilding of the unit from DC to AC traction. The Tuscan red main stripe signifies that this unit was rebuilt at the NS Roanoke locomotive shop in Roanoke, Virginia. The second unit in this scheme, number 4003, was released on December 15, 2016, exactly one year after the 4000. Number 4004 was released on August 18, 2016, painted in another special black, gray, and white scheme, this time with a blue main stripe to indicate that the unit was rebuilt at the NS Juniata locomotive shop in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And like the number 4003 that was rebuilt in Roanoke, the second unit in this scheme, number 4005, was released on December 15, 2016, exactly one year after the 4000. Lush green foliage, much friendlier looking skies. Today it looks a lot more like summertime and that's because it is. It's June 4 and the summer season is officially in full swing. Over at the Steamtown Y, an occasional visitor to the area claws its way up the 10 mile grade between Taylor and Clark Summit. A derailment in extreme western New York has prompted the detour of several trains over the Delaware and Hudson. 
Train 22K is a Chicago, Illinois to Air, Massachusetts unit intermodal train and the counterpart to the 23K which we'll see in the next video of this series. Like the 23K, the 22K used to be an all single tier train until PSR went into full blown effect on NS. Today, 22K and 23K run with stacks as well as packs now that they've been combined with the 205 and 206 that used to run independently. And although I would have come out for this train regardless of its power, the real catch for me was the trailing AC44 C6M number 4270. And although only 5 digits apart from the 4275 we saw in the first 11Z in this video, it was rebuilt more than a year ago in March of 2019. The two rebuilds inherited the numbers of the former F9A and F7B executive office car units on the Norfolk Southern. As part of its yard sale of 2020, NS axed the two executive F9A and F7B locomotives. All four F units were acquired in 2006 by Wick Mormon and rebuilt to GP38-2 standards by the Juniata shop. They were numbered 4270, 4271, 4275, and 4276. When the AC44 C6Ms were being rebuilt, the F units had the 4 removed from the front of their numbers and became numbers 270, 271, 275, and 276. Two of those Fab 4 electromotive units, F9A number 270 and F7B number 275, were purchased by the Reading and Northern to be fixed up for their passenger trains. RNN had already owned two former Bessemer and Lake Erie F7s that were being restored for service and the NS AMB Fs will be teamed up with one of the XBL and E units to form a matched ABA lasher. Try saying that three times fast. The plan was to replace the NS light gray paint with the RNN Tuscan Red, but the now RNN units did keep their NS numbers. On July 4, 2020, the Reading and Northern's ex-Norfolk Southern F units made their first official run over the Lehigh Division portion of the line from Jim Thorpe to Pittston, Pennsylvania. The office car special tied down overnight in the former Lehigh Valley's Coxton Yard, and on Sunday, July 5th, it made its way up the ex-Delaware Lackawanna and Western Bloom line to Taylor and up the Kaiser Valley backtrack where we caught. From Taylor, it returned to Pittston and headed back south to Reading. And just in case you were wondering, the other two F units were bought by the Aberdeen, Carolina, and Western. In the years leading up to the Norfolk Southern SD70 rebuilding program, it was often a matter of curiosity as to whether or not an SD70 or 75M would be equally as easy, and when I say as easy, that's a relative term here, to convert to AC traction. Perhaps converting them to max instead would have been the cheaper alternative due to the fewer inverters that were needed. Not as simple as the C44-9W to AC4400 CW conversion, in my opinion. For starters, much of the C44-9W and AC4400CW is fundamentally the same. The length, much of the equipment layout, etc., aside from the obvious actual traction motor package. While the SD70M and its 75 variants are two feet shorter than the Max with a different equipment layout. It may have been possible to use the ACE parts such as the inverter cabinet, but that would have been a serious bit of work by comparison to the Dash 9 to AC44 conversion in my opinion.
originally Dash 940 CW 8785, the 4065 has the DC to AC lettering and the AC traction waveform symbol on the cab that I fancy so much. It began life as a top hat standard cab Dash 940C in January 1995 and was rebuilt into the 432,000 pound heavyweight we see here today in July of 2017. July of 17 being its rebuild month. I caught its sister locomotive number 4064 moving through CP Bethlehem in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania trailing second behind the Norfolk and Western Heritage Unit number 8103 on train 24Q. In past videos, I raised the question as to why the Bensef decided to use the C4A1A trucks instead of keeping the CC or 6-axle trucks when it would seem that they lose a lot of tractive effort when starting or dragging a heavy train. Also said in past videos, the performance of a modern 6-axle DC locomotive with the C4 is roughly the same. I think that they did this to upgrade their air brakes and electrical systems to make them more compatible with the more modern Dash 9s on the roster along with the large fleet of ES44 DCs and ES44 C4s also in the fleet. At least that's what I was told. One area that they were said to be deficient in was that in the beginning they weren't distributed power compatible as compared to the many hundreds of later C44-9Ws that the Benz have purchased. I say in the beginning because to date I still don't know if that little anomaly has changed since then. There was a bit in Trains Magazine that had mentioned some of the issues that were starting to hold the C4s back. The verdict was that the rebuilding program for these locomotives wasn't being undertaken to bring them up to 6-axle AC standards for heavy coal service and such, but rather to extend their lifespan and make them fit in better with their stable mates on the usual manifest assignments and such. The thinking at the time was that if the Bensef suddenly decided that they had too many of these and not enough AC6 motors, they might select some modern C4s for conversion instead. Such an upgrade was supposedly trivial and part of the appeal of the whole C4 concept in the first place if a buyer suddenly wanted to upgrade and reassign them. And don't forget that BNSF is said to usually, if ever, order radio trucks for their six motor ACs from GE. If that rumor is true, then chances are that those surplus C4 trucks will be living on under a future order of ES44 T4s or whatever the railroad decides to designate them as, which further helps the economics of the conversion to bring them up to what amounts to ES44 C4 style standards. I've also read that it was a price point driven decision. The C4s were said to be priced about the same as the ES44 DC and, as pointed out earlier, have comparable performance to the Dash 9s. And they also have the benefit of sharing common traction components with the Bensef's ACGEs as well. Four two seven four is the new road number of the very last Norfolk Southern AC forty four C six M rebuild for twenty nineteen. In video T one sixty nine, you might remember when I said this: the newly rebuilt AC forty four C six M number forty two seventy two. A few videos back, we went over the NS roster for twenty nineteen, and I pointed out that the forty two seventy four was the last rebuild for this year. This year, meaning then twenty nineteen. You can see the full history of the 4272 in video T169.